Micro-inverters, DC-optimized inverters. Which is the best, most efficient solar inverter system for your home in 2024? I'm gonna be answering that question and teaching you about the differences between micro-inverter and DC-optimized inverter systems in today's video. The smarter way to go solar. All right, now in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the differences between micro-inverter-based solar systems and DC optimizer based solar power systems. Now, all solar power systems that are connected to the electric grid have to have some sort of an inverter. And what the inverter does is very simply, it converts the, the DC or direct current electricity that natively comes off the solar panels into high voltage alternating current electricity to match the electric grid. And so then once that electricity has been converted to AC format, it can be fed into the circuit breaker panels in your house. It can be used to power circuits within the house. And any excess solar power you might have can be exported or sent back to the power company for credits on your electric account. But it has to be in alternating current format. That's, that's the format that our electric grid is wired in. So there's two popular ways to do that. One is microinverters, where you have a small inverter device underneath each solar panel. And the other is with DC optimized inverters, where you have a DC optimizer underneath each solar panel. It's optimizing the electricity, but it's keeping it in DC format. And then it sends it down to a central inverter at ground level to do the DC to AC conversion. Okay, so first, a little bit of history. Back in the day, prior to 2012 or so, Pretty much all solar that was being installed on US homes used a central inverter or a string inverter. And what that means is that the solar panels were wired together in series strings, uh, typically eight to 12 solar panels at a time in series. And then that circuit or that string was brought down to an inverter at ground level to do the DC to AC power conversion. Now this architecture worked great because it, it made for very simple wiring on the roof. You could simply daisy chain the solar panels one to the next to the next, and then bring a simple low amperage circuit down to ground level using a small conduit, typically a three quarter inch or a one inch conduit. So the string inverter architecture was very simple to install, relatively low cost, um, and it was mostly efficient. Uh, as long as you didn't have any shading issues on the roof, a central string inverter architecture is very efficient and cost effective. Now the Achilles heel though of the string inverter architecture is that the string, at least back then, the string is only as strong as its weakest link. Meaning that if shading were to affect one of the solar panels, not only was that single solar panel is gonna have its power output reduced, but the output of the entire string would be reduced. And so essentially the string is only as strong as its weakest link, which mean you could have a, a shading area on a solar panel as small as a, an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, it could potentially bring the string production down by 50%. And so what we saw was the introduction of module level power electronics to help alleviate this problem. Now, when we talk about module level power electronics, we're talking about micro inverters or DC optimizers. And both of these devices allow each solar panel to operate mostly independently at its own maximum power potential. So even if one solar panel was negatively affected by shading or by damage, the rest of the panels in the system could still operate at or near max power. So the microinverter solution essentially places a small inverter underneath each solar panel. So you have the direct DC to AC conversion happening on the roof and one device per solar panel. Then the aggregate output of the microinverters is connected together in what's called a trunking cable to then bring that usable AC power down to ground level. So this worked great because now you, you've solved the performance challenge of partial shading on the roof. Plus you've now given the system owner visibility of how the system is running down to the per panel level because you could track each individual microinverter on the monitoring app. So there are a number of performance and user experience benefits here with the introduction of module level power electronics. However, the microinverter system was more complicated to install. I mean, after all, instead of just delivering one or two circuits down to a central inverter at ground level, now you have potentially dozens of individual microinverters on the roof that all have to be connected together with a trunking cable, uh, and they may also have to be separated into, into separate strings. 
So it is a little bit more com complicated as far as the wiring, a little bit more labor intensive to do the install, but overall was received by the marketplace as a great solution. Now, SolarEdge came on the scene around 2014 with the DC optimized inverter solution. And with the DC optimized solution, you essentially had all the performance benefits of the micro inverters, but with the ease of installation of the old string inverter system. So you could connect one optimizer per solar panel on the roof and then just daisy chain the optimizers together in a single string, just like you used to daisy chain solar panels together with the old string inverter system. Then the aggregate power can be brought down to ground level where you still have a central inverter unit that does the DC to AC conversion. So the DC optimized system basically says, hey, we'll give you all the performance benefits, we'll keep the cost low, almost as low as the old string inverter system. Um, and of course, what MLPEs also provide is rapid shutdown compliance. Um, meaning that, and then this was introduced back in the 2014 National Electric Code, but that means that if the fire department has to come to the house and they pull the electric meter, so they disconnect electric service to the house, the, the high voltage from the solar has to be shut down to within 10 feet of the solar array. And so by using module level power electronics, you automatically inherit that capability. So looking at it just on, on those factors, you might say, well, the DC optimized solution is probably the better solution then because you're getting the lower cost and the higher performance. However, there's a couple of other factors that factor into this question now as we readdress this video topic in 2024. Um, the first, of course, is battery storage. And now that batteries are becoming much more popular to be installed with solar, uh, especially for those of you watching in California and other solar markets where there's, there's no longer a one-for-one -one net metering, and so to get the maximum value from your solar investment, you have to install battery storage with it, then there's an additional advantage in using a DC optimized inverter solution. And that is that essentially you can keep your solar electricity in high voltage DC format and deliver that straight to the battery for charging your battery. Uh, now again, at any time you're converting power, whether you're stepping the voltage up, stepping it down, converting DC to AC or AC to DC, every time you do that, you're gonna lose a little bit in the conversion process. And so if you can take high voltage DC electricity directly from the solar panels and deliver that directly to the battery bus to charge the battery, you're gonna have a much more efficient charging or a much more efficient round trip performance than if you have to do it using a micro inverter system. Now, to do that same thing using a micro inverter system, you incur what's known as the triple conversion penalty, which means that you have a DC to AC conversion on the roof, so there's a little bit of loss there. Then at ground level, if you're charging an AC battery, you have to do a, an AC to DC conversion internal to the battery, right? Because if you have AC power coming off the roof, but inside the battery are DC, direct current battery cells, then there's an internal conversion to charge the battery again. So that's two conversions. And then when it comes time to draw energy out of the battery to power loads in the house, there's a third DC to AC inversion because again, the, the circuits in our house are wired for alternating current, like the electric grid. So whenever you're pulling out of that battery, you're pulling DC out of the battery cells, you have to invert it to AC before it can be sent via your home's wiring to the appliances. So when you're talking about today's world where you have high attachment rates, right? A high percentage of people that are installing batteries with their solar system, then a DC optimized system is gonna give you significantly better performance, I would say up to 30% better round trip efficiency by avoiding that triple conversion penalty. But the other factor you have to consider is overall system reliability. And that's why so many system owners and installers are still very loyal to Enphase and the microinverter architecture is because it is the most redundant system architecture. If one microinverter fails, it doesn't bring down the whole system. You might lose production on that particular solar panel, but it's not gonna pull down production for the entire system. Whereas with a DC optimized system, if the central inverter fails, your entire system is essentially down. And what we've seen is over the years, SolarEdge has had some challenges with reliability. But one thing that I get talking to installers is that Enphase has a very high degree of loyalty among its installers because of the high level of reliability uh, and because of the after install support that Enphase provides to its installation partners. 
So these are all factors to consider when you're talking about a microinverter system or a DC optimized inverter system. Uh, of course, another architecture that's re-emerging is, the, is the, the old DC coupled high voltage string inverter. Uh, and of course, Tesla Powerwall 3 and Point Guard are gonna be the best examples of this. Uh, but essentially, you know, what Tesla introduced with Powerwall 3 is they said, look, if, if the attachment rate of battery storage with solar is going to be so high, we'll just build the solar inverter and the battery into a single appliance and we'll allow it to take in that high voltage DC directly from the solar panels on the roof. Uh, again, it helps lower cost for the installation, but it's also a much, much more efficient high voltage DC solar to battery charging if that power does not need to be converted. And you can take solar straight from the roof deliver it to the battery bus, and then invert whatever you need for powering the house or for selling back to the grid. So that's another architecture that we're seeing re-emerge is the central string inverter DC coupled. And when I say DC coupled, I'm saying the connection between the solar system and the battery system happens at the DC side of the system before any inversions happen, so you don't incur those conversion losses. Well, folks, if you're getting good value from the videos that you watch here on Solar Surge, make sure you give us a thumbs up uh, and also go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this coming out, it'll come up on your feed and you can stay up to date with everything. Now, of course, if you're a homeowner or if you're in the process of looking at different solar power options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote for one of these two options uh, or any of the other leading options, as always, you can go ahead and feel free to reach out to us on the link below there. Set up a call with a solar expert uh, or just use the free online quote tool so you can see how much solar and battery storage cost in your area. Well, I thank you all for spending some more time on the Solar Surge channel. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.